I am Nick Shell. I am the living legend of hair loss. I am going to rock your world. I am going to change your life. I am going to raise your IQ. See, again, if I was big enough of a YouTuber to really have a t-shirt line that I would sell merchandise for, what I just said could have been on a t-shirt. I'm about to raise your IQ, which is funny because I fully embrace, I don't even have a high IQ. Like I'm so bad at math. I'm so bad at science. I'm so bad at anything spatial, trying to figure out how to fix stuff. I'm horrible. I'm the opposite of my own dad. My dad can build anything when it comes to houses, repairs, cars. He can figure any of that out himself. He's like a genius like that. And I didn't get any of that. Instead, when I went to college, I ended up becoming by default an English major just because I hated math and science so much. And I was the guy, you know, in my dorm that like, I could just crank out these term papers. Like it was nothing. And I actually thought it was fun. Meanwhile, they're complaining, staying up all night. I'm not, cause that's what I do. I'm good at like talking and convincing people that I know what I'm talking about. By the way, I'm a hair loss entertainer. I'm not an expert. And so I just know that now that, you know, I'm back from my sabbatical, people who don't realize that about me. And I want you to laugh with me when these comments come in. Well, you're supposed to be a hair loss expert, but what you're saying is not true because I know exception to the rule. Okay. Because I'm a hair loss entertainer and I generalize. I think generalizing is important. If we can see patterns, we can understand the whole better. But people who are not as emotionally intelligent as me and who are high conflict personality are always going to focus on the exception of the rule instead of what is the actual pattern. With that being said, and by, oh yeah, the, the beard thing too. I, I guess I need to make another new video about that. You know, there's this whole concept that I have created and, and making popular on my channel that there's a totally a connection between how soon you can grow a beard and the likelihood that you'll go bald and young. So be on the lookout for, for the newest version of that video, which I'm sure I'll probably film right after this. But as for now, let's focus on a video I made called Receding Hairline Diffuse Thinning My Hair When I Wake Up in the Morning. So I'm going to pronounce this name and I can appreciate it. King of Noobs Bong. That's hilarious and I like that a lot. This person had this to ask, quote, how much hair loss is normal on pillow in the morning? End quote. Well, let me provide a visual. Where's my pillow? Okay, so here's my pillow. Let me actually get a better look at this. So this is my pillow. And this is unrehearsed. I was never even planning on this being part of the video, but I just thought of it. Okay, so here's one hair. And you won't even be able to see it, I'm sure. You could probably see it better when, it, when it's on. Okay, so there's the hair. One, one hair. There's the back of it. Zero hairs, and that's not even the side I sleep on. So this is my pillow, and there's this one hair right here. So there's, there's the answer. Now, what I need to check though is to see specifically, were you asking about my pillow, or are you asking about like what's normal for your own pillow? I think you're asking about your own. We need to sort that. As you said how much hair loss is normal on pillow. So that's very vague, just on pillow, anybody's pillow. So, okay, so, so on mine, we just learned, and I just learned, because I don't pay attention to it, I had one hair on my pillow, and we'd have to ask ourselves, well, when's the last time the pillowcase was changed? Well, my wife changes our sheets, I think, every Sunday, so in my real time, it's Tuesday. That's assuming she changed the sheets over the weekend. I'm pretty sure she did, but I can't confirm that. So what I'm saying is, if she did change the sheets, in two nights of sleeping, I've only had one hair fall out. And another part of the question I get all the time is how much normal is, you know, hair loss for in the shower? Uh, I never notice any in the shower. Okay. But let's understand why this is such a common question and why I can't relate to it. And it's funny because one of the first times I made this video, cause I just make the same videos over and over and people don't notice the difference. They actually become more popular the more I redo the same video for the fifth time in the same year. So what I've learned from the comments is that as you get older, even if you don't actually go bald, you lose a lot of your hair density. It's normal to lose your 
your hair density as you get older, even if you don't notice it go bald. Okay, so I actually have, even if it doesn't look like it, I've got less real estate up here. It's absolutely thicker here than it is up here. Okay, so because of that, I've got less hair to lose. See, what happens is when you have thicker hair, you're shedding more. You have more hair, you're younger, there's more there, you got more to lose. But when you're me and you've already got less hair to begin with, even though it's just not that obvious, but when you're in my situation, then what happens is less, less falls out because there's less to fall out. Like almost like uh, only the strong survive, you know, survival of the strongest and of the fittest and all that. That's basically what's happened. The weak hairs throughout my life, they're gone. Only the strong survive. This is the strongest hair I've got for now. You know, give it a couple more years, there's going to be less real estate up here and probably even less hair is falling out. So that makes sense, right? I mean, it's, it's that simple. The more hair you have, the more that you're going to shed and ultimately the more you're going to have to lose. So when you have less hair, you shed less. I mean, it, it's funny when you think about it that simply, but that really is the answer to the question. So as far as, but here, let's get, remember, one of my things I'm going to be doing on my channel is not simply answering the person's question from my own 38 year old perspective of emotional intelligence, but instead answering it, assuming the person is 17 years old, because that's what I have to do. I have to travel back in time to when I was 1997, that was 1998, that was it. I was 16. When I was 17, it was 1998, went before most of you were born. And, and so in, in that timeline, yeah, I mean, I can, I remember when I was a teenager, I had more hairs on my pillow. I, I shed more and in the shower, same thing. So look at me now, you know, this is how much hair I still have and it was okay. So the point is the, psych, the psychological foundation of the question is really translation. Hey, Nick, I have a lot of hair on my pillow when I wake up in the morning because I shed. And also when I shower, there's a lot of hair in my hand or whatever. Hey, Nick, does that mean I'm going bald? No. That is not, that in itself is no indication you're going bald. I would say the, the way you know that you actually are losing your hair to some degree is when you look in the mirror at your scalp. And I would say you kind of compare it to the sides, kind of feel it, and then do the same up here. I can literally feel more air. It's lighter when I feel the top compared to the side. Or if you look at, pull, kind of pull back your hair, and if you can very easily see your scalp and you, you notice your scalp more than you did before, maybe that's an indication. Those are more legitimate ways to know that you actually are having thinning hair. Forget about the pillow, forget about the shower. That's, that's not it. So there you go. I answered your question. How many hairs? Doesn't matter. Stop looking at your pillow. Stop looking at your hair when you, when you wash it in your hand, stop. That's not helping you figure this thing out. You know, if you continue watching my videos, I will continue to, to answer your questions and, or you can, I've made over 2,700 hair loss videos on this channel. You can always just type in search any question you're asking. I can answer any question about hair loss that anyone ever can ask. And I've already made that video probably four different times in four different years. It already exists. But of course, the way this channel set up is, the more videos I make, the more comments people leave, and I'll continue to re-answer those questions, you know, you know, the, the new rebooted version, rebooted version of that, that answer. So, um, how do you know if you're losing your hair? That's what I would say. I mean, basically just kind of looking in the mirror and see if, if, if it looks thinner up here than, than it does here. And can you see your scalp when you pull back your hair? Another way to really test it out is just to, uh, is to shave it off or, or cut it shorter. Because for me, I mean, the general rule is my hair, if I'm gonna have hair, two and a half to three inches. I, yeah, like two and a half really. Two, but yeah, about two inches on top is about how long I keep the length. Because shorter than that will actually do, will expose my diffuse thinning. Now my hair does look good when it's all shaved off, but once it starts growing out from the buzz cut, from say a number three guard all the way until it gets about two, at least two inches, it looks pretty bad because it is thin. And so that would be another way 
am I losing my hair, Nick? There's lots of hairs on my pillow in the shower. Forget about that. Get a haircut. Get your hair cut, say, you know, like an inch and a half on top. Do that. Go get a haircut this weekend. An inch and a half on top. It would be kind of short and spiky and messy. Do that. And then look at your hair. The first thing you will also be able to see if your hairline looks different than it did in a while. But you will also be able to see with my hair spiked and with the hair product in it, is my scalp showing? If the answer is yes, then that will help confirm that for you. So there you go. I answered your question. I'm glad you're here. We're going to keep this thing, keep this thing going by you leaving another comment so that I will make another video that I've already